Brexit was a bad idea. Dutch brutally shut down the idea of a good Brexit. ARCH Remain Femi has savaged the idea of a good Brexit and demanded that those in power openly acknowledge that Brexit was a bad idea. The vocal Remainer today tweeted, We won't be able to start properly limiting the damage Brexit is doing to people until those in power openly acknowledge that Brexit was a bad idea to begin with. As long as the fantasy of a good Brexit survives, every decision we make will be literally misguided. However, Femi's comments were blasted by a Brexiteer, who replied, It's only Remainers who consider it a mistake. What you're perceiving as a mistake is actually just an outcome that people wanted and voted for, they just think differently to you. But you'll never accept that and you'll never move on. Another Twitter follower of Femi replied, Some people will always be damaged by the outcome of a vote but in a democracy the majority rules and if you don't like it then grow up, grow a pair and learn. Meanwhile, French fishing chiefs have threatened to ban Dutch vessels from one of their ports after a group of Dutch fishermen allegedly stole local supplies. Olivier Lepreter, president of the Regional Fisheries Committee of Eau de France, accused Dutch vessels of having snatched traps from French vessels last week. In the latest incident in a long row over English Channel fishing rights, Express.co.uk understands around 600 traps were taken from the port city of boulogne sur mer An industry source said, it's controversial this, the Dutch pitching our supplies. It demonstrates a complete lack of respect for other countries. Regional fishing chiefs in Eau de France are becoming increasingly concerned about the presence of Dutch vessels in the English Channel. They stress they are a threat to French vessels who see them as serious competition due to the use of unsustainable fishing practices. One common practice known as fly shooting or pulse fishing involves using multiple nets to encircle and capture shoals of fish. Heavy ropes are dragged across the ocean floor which will displace whatever is underneath. Mr. Lepret claimed Boulogne sur mer was seeing the invasion of the Dutch industrial fleet, who are over-exploiting the resources of the English Channel. We all knew, the Dutch Golden Age led to a tremendous outpouring of still-life paintings in the 17th century. Since then, critics have generally belonged to two opposing schools of thought when it comes to interpreting them. On one side, the generally sombre scenes are read symbolically through the lens of Christian religious traditions, often underscoring life's transience, the proliferation of rotting fruit, withered flowers, and slowly draining our glasses offer sobering examples of memento mori, reminders of death. Alternatively, scholars assess the artist's skill in employing an array of visual effects in these banquet scenes, floral arrangements, or vanitas paintings. But while still lifes are generally thought to be devoid of narrative, certain deeper meanings come into focus once you look beyond the metaphors and showy artistic tricks. The prosperous Dutch Golden Age was largely fostered by wealth reaped from overseas trading and colonial ventures. Exotic luxuries from all over the world poured into Dutch ports, fruits from across the Mediterranean, tobacco from the New World, spices and precious gems from India, tea, silk, and porcelain from China and Japan, sugar from colonies in Brazil and Guyana, and slaves from Africa. Private organizations like the Dutch East India Trading Company and the Dutch state aggressively pursued their economic agendas overseas, and the brutal legacy of colonialism is still felt today. As the prosperity of Dutch society increased, the general public became more engrossed with the amusements of everyday life, including education, commerce, and material goods. These changes had enormous repercussions on the art market, and it's no coincidence that the still life arose as an independent genre in Europe parallel to the birth of early market capitalism and the world's first consumer societyism.